From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Impe Presents, the truth in news and commentary. Here now is Dr. Rexella Van Impe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impe Presents. You know, friends, if ever there were a time that I'm very blessed to have you be with us on this program, it's this program because it is so important in the light of everything going on in the world and we're going to be touching on a lot of that. Some of the things that uh, really affect all of our lives and so we're going to be talking about those things pertaining to you and what God says about those things. That's what really matters. What does he say about the day and age in which we're living? Now, friends, it is a one, oh, by the way, I'm going to show you what the title of the program is and how important it is. Stopping America's Disasters and Decline. You know, I was just asking the Lord so very, very much. What would you like to have right up front on the program when I do this all-important one? And the Lord gave this to me. Stopping America's Disasters and decline. We're going to be addressing a lot of that today. And I am so very, very happy to have as our guest, Dr. Erwin Lutzer. Now he is Pastor Emeritus of the Moody Church in Chicago, where he served as senior pastor for 36 years. Oh my, that's wonderful, doctor. He's an award-winning author of many books, including We Will Not Be Silenced and the featured speaker on three radio programs that are aired on about 750 national and international outlets. Oh, my. He and his wife, Rebecca, and by, his, by the way, his beautiful wife is here with us today. So glad she could come and be with us. They have three grown children, eight grandchildren, and live in the Chicago area. How grateful I am to have you today, Doctor. Thank you for taking time to Thank come. Thank you so much, Rex Sullen. It's so great to be with you again. And I want you to know that I share the burden that is on your heart for America and for all those who are listening. I think that they are going to be blessed, encouraged, and challenged to stand against the present culture. Amen. And we certainly need to do that, don't we, today, Doctor? Well, we're going to be talking so much about where the Bible says we are going. And uh, with that in mind, before we get into the disasters that we will talk about and you've seen all around us, I would like to say that we're headed towards something that Jack Van Impe talked about many, many years ago, a one world government. That's where we're going, friends. And we're ready to enter into that one world government. So uh, I'm going to ask if uh, our director, Jerry, would please put on Jack, who talked about this one world government years and years ago because he quoted the Bible. Take a look, please. Revelation 13, 1, the Antichrist arises, and he has power over all kindreds, tongues, people, and nations, verse 7. And he's such a great controller of things, that he becomes worshipped. Verse 8, all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. An Antichrist. And 1 John 2, 18 says, Antichrist will come. But we're living to see the beginnings of it right now. But with him, there is a false prophet. Does the Bible predict such a thing? Yes. Jesus said in Matthew 24, verses 5, 11, and 24, there shall be false Christs and false prophets. And he warns us about them in Matthew 7, 15. He says, false prophets shall come and shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord Jesus that bought them. What does this false prophet do? And he rises in verse 11, and then he makes a system that controls all people. You think what's going on now with these phones is something? Listen to this, verses 16 18. This is the false prophet who's honoring the world dictator who's controlling the world. It's already beginning almost everywhere in our nation and world now. 
He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or forehead that no man, no man could buy or sell, save he the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that understanding count the number of the beast of the Antichrist, for it's the number of man and his number 600, three score and six, the infamous name 666. Now, would it be possible to control all seven billion of us? Listen, we now have an invention in America called Titan, which does 20,000 trillion calculations per second. And, oh, we were raving about that, but now we got Sequoia. 54,000 trillion calculations per second. There's seven billion of us. That, and I figured it all out, could pick up 700 to 800 pieces of information on all seven billion of us simultaneously per second. What a day to be alive. Bible prophecy is being fulfilled. And our Jesus is coming very, very soon. What a day to be alive. Absolutely, Jack. If he were here today, he would just say, it's all in the Bible and it's developing to such a level I, I cannot even imagine. Now, Dr. Lutzer and I are going to pick up on America's disasters. I don't think that I've ever seen anything in our country like we're seeing right now where people can walk up and kill somebody they don't even know or kill several people or going to a school. You're, I'm going to put some things on the screen right now for you to see. And I think that your, your minds will be enlightened as to where we really are going. There, you, there it is. This was pure evil. Well, they're talking about Buffalo, New York, 10 people were killed and three wounded. Evil, sickening act. Label hate crime. Well, like I said, 10 were shot there. And then going on to Oxford, at the Oxford High shooting, they're trying to figure out why. Why would it even ha happen like this? Again, Rampage shatters Oxford. Well, a teen is already held in the shooting. And, oh, oh Uvalde, I cannot believe this one. Gunman kills 19 children, two adults at Texas school. I, I cried when I saw that. There are no words, beautiful souls, remembering 19 kids and two teachers. Here we are again. Well, we were having a 4th of July parade just outside of Chicago, and a shooting leaves at six people dead. Look at the police officer there. He can't believe it either. There they were celebrating the 4th of July. Here we are, six killed, dozens injured at 4th of July parade. Well, it was a holiday crowd. And as I said, it was just in one of the Chicago suburbs. Search for motive meaning continues. They can't figure it out. The FBI is in on this. That's Highland Park, Illinois, as I said, just outside Chicago. I'm going to our guest. It doesn't seem that there's any reason that anyone would do all these things, go into a, a school and kill 19 children. I can't believe that. Dr. Lutzer, hatred produces this, doesn't it? There seems to be so much hatred in the world today, but we can know that it's coming. The Bible said that there would be hatred just before the return of the Lord. And the Bible says in Timothy that evil men and imposters will go from bad to worse. And of course, the headlines that you've indicated prove that. Now, if you ask the question, you know, what is going on? We have to understand that there are many people who really struggle with guilt and meaninglessness, and they don't know exactly what to do. And so what they do is they turn to violence in their anger and they forget the responsibility that all of us have to respect each other. But there's something else going on. 
and that has to do with the disintegration of the family. Families are falling apart, oftentimes because of policies in our nation, frequently because we're living in a culture where the cohesion that holds us together is beginning to tear us apart. And when it comes to the culture, very quickly, there are going to be three different kinds of Christians that will respond to the moral and spiritual collapse that we see. There will be those that will be complicit with the culture, giving the culture what it wants. Then there are going to be those who are complacent. They will disagree with the culture, but say nothing about it. And then, Rexella, there will be those that will be courageous and they will stand against the culture. And given the headlines that you have just uh, displayed, Christians are called to be salt and light, yes. to stand against what is happening, yes. and to give people the alternative of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that's where we are at in this nation. Amen. Absolutely, Dr. Lutcher. I agree with you 100%. Oh, my. And, you know, friends, the thing, Dr. Lutzer, that really troubles me, too, it's not just happening here in the United States. It's happening around the world. You know, uh, my husband has um, relatives outside of the United States. I call them. One of them uh, said not too long ago, we're afraid to leave our house, you know. And our government has taken over and said, if you don't do this, you can't leave your house. But take a look. Take a look at this. Japan, they, they're such a, a safe place because they never had really shootings and all the things that they're having right now. Sitsu Abe, Japan's longest serving prime minister was just assassinated. He was shot in the chest during a campaign speech. He was only 67 years old. And here you see the country they're saying, oh, the death of our leader. I can't believe it. Now let's go to another place, Copenhagen. Witnesses say Copenhagen attack. Suspect went to hunt people, lured victims closer, a gunman killed three people and wounded several others in a Copenhagen mall. How would you like to go to the mall and just have somebody pull out the gun? And uh, you don't know them. But it's worldwide, friends. And this was predicted in the Bible just before the Lord would return. I'm going to get to some good stuff, of course, in just a moment. And uh, I want to emphasize something that should Christians be afraid? Dr. Luther, let's just jump ahead a little bit here. Should we be afraid of everything going on in the world? Should we hide? Like some people are, they're afraid to go out of their house? Or can we have peace in this troubled world? Well, Rexella, what's very important for people to understand is Jesus made this statement. He said, do not fear those who are able to kill the body. And after that, there's nothing else they can do. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now, what's very important is that, of course, we take precautions. If there's violence in our area, we watch where we are going. But at the same time, we recognize that there's so much happening in the world that we absolutely cannot control. And that's why Jesus made the astounding statement. He said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Nobody else in the world can make a promise like that. So as we think about our collapsing culture that we have been talking about, the center of it all has to do with Christ who offers us something that the world cannot have. Amen. That's absolutely uh, true. Not only are we going down that road, doctor, but friends, you know, I don't know if you've noticed, we're losing our, our freedom. You know, Jack talked about a one world government. Well, you won't be going into a one world government until you lose what you've got, our freedom. And I would like for you to take a look, please, at one of our presidents of the past. And this is what he had to say. If we lose freedom here, there is no place to escape to. This is the last stand 
on Earth, President Ronald Reagan. Well, Ronald Reagan was uh, one of um, a wonderful, wonderful president, as you well know. In fact, he wrote my husband one of the nicest letters that we've ever had from a government member. And we praise the Lord for what he had to say. He recognized it. Here it is. Americans are most concerned about freedom. Most Americans see that we're at risk about losing our freedom. And then again, a deficit of clear thinking about loss of freedom. Do you see where the hand is? Can't get out. Can't do anything unless you get permission. Oh, friends, who would have believed that just 10 years ago or so, this world would have changed so very much. 10 years ago, I felt I had the freedom, and I, maybe you did too, but not anymore. And Dr. Lutzer, we are headed toward that one world government, aren't we? We really are, and it's very important for people to understand that while one world government was always easy to envision, today all the pieces of the puzzle are in place. For example, the push that we have toward electronic currency, doing away with the dollar so that there can be equity among the people of the world. And of course, once you have that, another part of the puzzle is a borderless world in which people can live wherever they want because in the minds of some, to insist on a strong border is wrong. And so what we're living in is a time when electronically the control of the world is certainly something that we can visualize. But the most important thing is for us to realize that in the midst of that, those who belong to God are the ones who are going to be victorious over the Antichrist. And in that sense, we have nothing to fear. Remember this, that evil never retreats on its own. It only retreats when it is confronted by a superior power. And that's why it's so important for us to realize that it is the people of God who are able to stand against the evil and Rexella, God has given us the resources by which we can stand against it personally and as churches and as the people of God. Yes. You know, Dr. Lutzer, there are so many people that need to make a decision for the Lord. There are so many people out there who they're committing suicide. They're turning to drugs. They're turning to alcohol illicit sex. They don't even, some of them even believe in God. I was telling our crew here, uh, I read an article where so many teenagers said, we don't know if there's a God and we don't care. Oh my, our world needs to turn around. And you need to turn around where you have peace. Perhaps you're within that group. You're saying, oh, I have no peace. I can't sleep at night. I can't do this. I can't do that. And yet we can have peace in a troubled, troubled world. Only one way, and that's the Prince of Peace. If you'll ask Jesus Christ who died on the cross for you, that's why he came. He came to die on the cross, to give his blood, that we might trust in him as the Son of God and invite him into our hearts and our lives and the Lord will bring not only eternal salvation, but he will bring peace. And I'm going to ask our guest right now, if he will lead you into a new life, a new life in Christ because you'll accept the Lord. Dr. Lutzer, would you pray that wonderful prayer, asking people to accept Christ as their Savior? I'd be most happy to do that. And to all who are listening, I want to remind you that despite the evil that is around us, you personally, as Rexella has pointed out, can have peace. Jesus died to reconcile us to God, to do away with our sins. And he says, come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. I want you to pray this short prayer. Father, I want to thank you that Jesus loves the world Thank you that he died on the cross so that we could be reconciled. 
Thank you, Father, that despite all of the collapsing culture that we see, personally, we can invite him into our lives. And I pray that many people may do that right now. May they pray a prayer in which they say, Jesus, I acknowledge my sin. I receive you as Savior, as my very own. And then grant them the gift of assurance. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dr. Lutzer, how good it is that we can see people opening their hearts and knowing that they're going to be saved forever because they have Christ in their heart and that they're going to have peace right now. And thank you for that wonderful prayer. And I just want to say, friends, if you prayed the prayer, please let me know. I'll be sending you this wonderful little booklet, First Steps in a new direction. You don't have to keep going the direction you're in because the Lord will walk with you and show you the way to go. You won't be lost anymore. And I really pray that you will order this wonderful, wonderful offer. No reason to hide. With everything going on in the world, should we hide ourselves in our homes? Are we afraid to speak out as Christians? Dr. Lutzer wrote a marvelous book. And you need to have this in your home. I really, really mean that. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive no reason to hide. Bob? To order your copy of the No Reason to Hide book with a bonus DVD, Stopping America's Disasters and Decline, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A, 6Y1. Oh, thank you so very, very much, Bob. And I want to encourage you to right now order this or write to us and we'll be happy to send it to you. You really, really need to have this. And I want to say that with your order, we'll be sending you this program only extended. Some of the things that Dr. Lutzer and I could not say on this program, we're going to be saying on an extended version the DVD of this program all the way to explaining some things that we could not get on the television program. So I trust that you will be making the call. And Dr. Lutzer, again, I want to thank you for coming and for writing this wonderful book, No Reason to Hide. You know, I know some people who are just absolutely scared to death. And with the message that you gave about receiving Christ, we don't need to hide, do we? We need the peace and the joy and the blessing and the walk with the Lord. And uh, the extended version is going to be talking about some other things that has brought fear into the lives of people, the disasters that we're seeing. But uh, it's all pointing to something a lot better, isn't it, Dr.? It really is. You know, time is short. Eternity is very long. So what we need to do is to take the long-term view and to understand no matter what we go through here, and even suffering for Christ should be considered to be a badge of honor. Yes. You know, Doctor, you're right about that. My brother was a missionary over in Vietnam. And, uh, of course, uh, that now is a very, very... Uh, hostile place to go, but he was willing to offer his life. He didn't, wasn't killed there. He came back and became a pastor here in the United States. But some people are willing to give their lives for the Lord and say, no matter what, I am going to live for the way uh, God wants me to live, and he will walk with you. What's in your life right now? Are you troubled? You don't know which way to go. Maybe you're making a decision that only God can help you make. 
I know that you probably have faced things, Dr. Lutzer, in your life. We have, where it was a difficult decision, but God helped us to make it, and he walked with us. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. If you have Christ in your heart, he's not going to leave you. He's going to walk with you, right? That's exactly true. And what we can't do is allow our emotions to get ahead of or block the promises of God. Our nation needs to know that feelings aren't facts. The facts are in the Word of God, and they need to be believed even when we're going through very difficult times. Yes, no matter what. Oh, the Lord will never leave you or forsake you. Now, if you... Um, well, please order No Reason to Hide. I will be sending you this program, and as I said, an extended version of this program. We're going to be talking about some things that are uh, really, really disastrous right now. And um, I, in fact, I call them that, disasters. They are disasters. But again, do we have a reason to hide? Absolutely not. The Lord will walk with us no matter what. What are you facing right now? Are you having a hard time deciding? Just ask the Lord to show you His will for your life. The quickest way to get back on your feet is to get down on your knees. How true. So many times in my life, Jack and I face things that only the Lord could straighten out. Perhaps, uh, you know, going around the world like we did with our TV program and like we do right now. How good it is that God directs you. He opens these doors. But we are facing something right now that we need to be praying about. And that is being put off of TV because we mention certain things. Well, we're going to be faithful no matter what. And we've got just a couple seconds left, Doctor. We need to be faithful to the end, don't we? We really do, and we need to understand the pressure points that Christians are facing, and that, of course, is the emphasis in the book, No Reason to Hide. Absolutely, and so be sure and order, and you'll get this program, an extended version of the program. And always remember what I said just a moment ago. The quickest way to get back on your feet is to get down on your knees. We look forward to being with you again very, very shortly with another special, which goes into every state. It goes through all of Europe, and it also goes to South Africa, many, many places that only TV uh, can, and of course, uh, the radio can help us go. God bless you. Keep looking up because the Lord cares for you. The preceding program was paid for by the partners of Jack Van Impey Ministries.